What's the difference between plants grown in fox farms, ocean forests, versus their happy frog soil? I've seen this question asked throughout many forums since they are both very popular among the hot pepper world and popular among other plant worlds as well. Now, if you've seen my video explaining how to use the Fox Farm fertilizers, you might remember that when I spoke to Fox Farm on the phone, they mentioned that the ocean forest has more amendments which will feed your plants longer than the happy frog. They also mentioned they did not recommend sowing seeds in either of these soils. Well, we're gonna test out all of that. And for shits and giggles, we're also going to grow plants in espoma soil and plain old regular topsoil. These will be our control plants. As a safety measure, I'm also going to throw some seeds in a tray of Jiffy seed starting mixture. Here are my questions. Will plants grow differently in ocean forest versus happy frog? Is ocean forest worth the extra expense? For how long will the soil feed the plants without adding any other nutrients? Would I need to fertilize at all during a typical two month period? Keep in mind, I normally grow my plants inside for two months before I transplant outside. However, this experiment is going to run for three months. Can you germinate seeds directly in all of these soils? And I'll also be demoing my AC Infinity Cloudline T6 exhaust fan throughout this entire time to see if it helps prevent algae or fungus growth on the soil. Any corrections or updates to my videos will be posted on my blog, so go to 86peppers.com for the most up-to-date information. Okay, let's look at the setup here. The Espoma organic potting soil does not contain any fertilizer at all, but it does contain mycotone, which is Espoma's proprietary blend of mycorrhizal fungus, which is a natural root stimulant. The topsoil also does not contain any fertilizer, it's just dirt, but to level the playing field a little bit, I did mix in a little perlite to improve drainage. To remove as many variables as possible, I only used seeds from the same cayenne pepper pod, and I fed the plants with water that I pH'd to 6.5 the entire time, including the spray bottle I used during sowing. Each plant will be contained in its own leak-tested, mind you, sandwich baggie to prevent fertilizer runoff from contaminating the other pots. Looking back, double cups definitely would have been easier here, but I wanted to test this in a real-world environment, and I don't use the double cup method. I started by placing five seeds in each nursery pot, sprayed them, and enclosed them in a 1020 dome and placed them on a heating mat. Looking back, I don't think the heating mat was necessary, but more on that later. Please keep in mind, I'm not used to sowing seeds in the middle of August. Here's day 10. Many of the seeds have sprouted, so I moved them downstairs into the grow tent. I placed them under my T5 light fixture, set a fan on low to allow for indirect air circulation. Both the lights and the fan were set on a timer which ran for 15 hours a day. For the AC Infinity fan, the carbon filter isn't necessary for these types of plants, but I left it on there anyway and set it to run 24-7 at the second speed which provides constant airflow to exhaust air from the tent. I left only the bottom two screens open on the tent for intake air. I have the power consumption and total expense of this project on the screen for nerds like me, and it's really surprising how little power the T6 exhaust fan consumes at just 63 cents per month with that fan running 24-7. The temperature inside the tent was around 75 degrees, which is optimal. 18 days later, let's take a look at the plants and tally the germination results. The ocean forest and happy frog germinated the quickest and also produced the highest numbers, ocean forest with just one seed short of 100%. I do want to mention the uncharacteristically low percentage of the Jiffy seed starting mixture. This is normally what I use every year. This could be the result of excessive heat due to the heating mat. So please let me know if you typically sow seeds in warm climates, drop a comment. Let me know if you guys use heating mats at all. It's either that or the mixture went bad somehow or got contaminated. But regardless, in this environment, we proved that you can in fact germinate seeds with ocean forest and happy frog with good results. Day 25, we could see the ocean and frog doing very well. These are very healthy looking plants we have here. The ocean forest just a bit taller than the frog. Uh, I noticed that the ocean seemed to be drying out the quickest, so I responded by giving it more water. 
but that just ended up giving them edema later on so I had to constantly tweak my watering schedule throughout this entire thing. Here we are at day 37 just 12 days later and the plants have exploded. Many are growing buds. Here's a good shot of that edema going on with both plants. The ocean forest continuing to tower over the happy frog but just by a couple inches so it's obvious that there are more or different nutrients present in the ocean forest soil just as Fox Farm said. I also think that this is the ideal size for going in the ground. So if we brought these plants outside a week ago to harden off they would be going in the ground today at day 37. Any longer the plants might become root bound which could affect their ability to thrive outside after transplanting. Now I normally sow seeds in February or March in my unfinished basement which is typically around 55 degrees. So I would expect these plants to take twice as long to reach the size which would be around two months. Here they're growing extremely quick which is most likely due to the warm summer months. Amazing how the espalma and topsoil just stopped growing after about two to three weeks. It's obvious without fertilizing, you can't really expect desirable results with these soils. At day 51, we can see the plants are starting to use up most of the nutrients in the soil. The lower leaves are paling, but the plant remains an overall fair shade of green. I think now would be a good time to start fertilizing. And here you can see I definitely need to tighten up my watering schedule a bit more. Let's jump ahead to day 88, the last day of the study. We could see some pretty big differences between the ocean and the frog. We have some full on peppers here, but look at how much bigger the ocean plants are. And not only that, we can see the plants in both mediums have totally exhausted the soil and there's not much nutrient left in it at this point. The ocean forest does look a little bit greener, so although it's not that impressive, it does seem like the ocean forest did feed the plants a little bit longer than the happy frog. Now, I failed to document exactly when this started to occur, which was the main purpose of this study, but we know that they started showing signs of nutrient deficiency at day 51. And 37 days later, which is a long time, I know, you can see they're pretty much famished, but not entirely dead. So let's cut the difference and say that at day 67, they used up most of the fertilizer in the soil. So getting back to my original question, do you need to fertilize with ocean forest or happy frog while they're growing inside for two months? I would say no, you don't need to fertilize, but we can definitely open this up to a larger discussion. The plants were beginning to show signs of malnourishment at day 51, which is obviously short of two months. However, they were already overgrown at this point. I would have moved them outside around the 30 day mark based on how fast they grew. And at that point, they were very healthy looking. So it's not only the span of time that depletes the nutrients, we also need to factor in plant size as well, especially when they're growing peppers, which definitely increases the nutrient demand. Now when I spoke to Fox Farm, they recommended to wait two to three weeks before introducing fertilizer after transplanting into ocean forest. But according to these results, it appears you can definitely wait longer. We're not even going to talk about the espoma and topsoil subjects. They did seem like they grew a bit, but it's obvious without fertilizer, you're just wasting your time here. So let's sum up the results and how I feel about them. Was there any difference between the plants growing in the ocean and the frog? The ocean forest plants definitely grew taller than the happy frog. Uh, they seem to provide nutrients to the plant a little bit longer. Is ocean forest worth the extra expense? For hot peppers, I don't think so, because inside, it's not all about growing the biggest plants possible. It's more about reaching a target size for safe transplanting outside. Now, I'm just gonna come out and say it. For cannabis, which is what these soils are very popular for, the goal is to, is to grow the biggest plants possible if they're growing inside the whole time in a controlled environment. So in that case, I would say yes, it is worth it. But this isn't really that kind of channel, regardless of what all the comments on my Fox Farm fertilizer video say. How long will the soil feed the plants without adding any other nutrients? We're not entirely sure, unfortunately, but we know it was somewhere between 57 and 88 days, which is a long time. The ocean forest fed just a little bit longer than the happy frog, but not by much in this study. 
Can you germinate seeds in ocean, forest, ha or happy frog? Absolutely. And that's good news for me because I can skip the whole Jiffy seed starting mixture and I'm just going to buy uh, Ocean Forest or Happy Frog. I'll probably do a mix of both since I have so much left over. Um, and I'm just going to germinate directly in that. Would you need to fertilize during the two months prior to transplant um, while the plants are inside? I'm going to say no, you don't have to. Again, it was a little difficult in this study because the plants grew so fast, but I'll have a definite answer when I grow my plants for real in March 2022. And would an exhaust fan help prevent algae mold growth? It actually did. Throughout the entire study, I did not see any sign of algae or mold on the surface of the soil, and for a lot of the time, the soil was pretty damp and wet on top. Whether it makes a difference with pepper plants, it's uncertain, but it might be more effective with more disease prone veggies like tomatoes. So that's something to consider if you start your tomato plants inside. If you're interested in the exhaust fan, for hot pepper plants, you wouldn't need the T-Series, which comes with a controller that regulates the fan speed based on humidity and temperature. You could get away with the S6 or the S4 series, which just provides constant airflow at different settings. And those are around $100. All the links are in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. Please tell me what you thought in the comments below.